Welcome to the Peach Tree Morning Show by DCI. It's a wise way to start the day. Hope you enjoy. Hi, welcome to the Peach Tree Cafe Morning Show. I'm happy to report that the Peach Tree Cafe has a new toilet and we're almost ready to serve you when you get out of quarantine. Uh, I'd like to welcome my two guests today, Wong Tin, who's a telecommunications executive uh, in Australia. She has a pharmaceutical sciences degree from the best university in China called Peking University. And she has come to almost all the Sedona College of International Management terms. And she's an amazing teacher and extremely intelligent and dangerous to have on the show. Uh, Janice Sanders is from Colorado, United States. She has a degree in geology because she likes to mine for diamonds of wisdom. She has come to all the Sedona College terms and she's an entrepreneur with three successful stores and one successful granddaughter. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, Wang Chen, can you give us the question for today? Yep. Oh, Monday. Okay, so the question for Monday is? Hi. Right? Okay, from Florian. Hi there, my name is Florian, and I've got a question regarding health. My daughter and I, we both suffer from hay fever. What can I do to heal it for both of us, using the diamond cutter kind of principles and the seed system? Thank you. I don't know. I think we should hire him, uh, Florian as the host of the <laughs> Peace Tree Show because he speaks so eloquently. Uh, okay, I'm going to start with Janice. What do you think Florian and his daughter should do? Well, you know, I gave this a little bit of thought and I thought it's like two questions. First, you want to know what's causing it. And second, you might want to know how to stop it. So I was thinking things that might cause your hay fever um is the food you eat you know the environment around you why why is it your food and the plants around you why are they attacking you and causing you this hay fever so i thought it must be some environmental ripening and um you know it means you have to be a detective and think how, what in the past maybe you've done to have this sort of ripening and for myself, I have to have, excuse me, I've had to do the research for myself. And I got to thinking pesticides. Pesticides, when you spray them on food or plants, we're actually hurting other lives alive. We're hurting uh, farm workers, we're hurting insects. So I thought possibly if you use pesticides right now, you could possibly stop using them and that would be protecting life and start buying organic foods because that would uh, be protecting farmers because sometimes those farmers, they pick the fruit that's just been sprayed and it hurts them. So that's that's one thought I, I had. Okay, Wang Tian, what, what's your opinion? Oh, okay, thank you, Kishila. Um, thank you, Janice, I think uh, you really got a point. And um, I think that because um, aller allergic reaction is sort of like uh, we are our immune system are too strong and then we're attacking uh, things that s normally don't cause us um, trouble like pollens like hay fever in Florian's question so I think um, it, this uh, the why we have allergy really it feels like a proof of emptiness in our life like a hidden evidence because uh, if pollen has the function to cause allergy itself, then everyone would have hay fever. But mm -hmm. uh, we know that's not the case. So it really kind of shows us that, okay, so maybe the trouble is not caused by something outside. It's actually something here. Um, so, I, but, uh, and then thinking of this statement, I'm thinking, uh, then we would think that, oh, it's our genetic code that make us allergic to something. Um, so I'm also thinking, because we know that, okay, why am I allergic? It's because we have seeds, maybe we harmed other lives. Uh, but what if they say, oh, it's because of genetic codes? Mm -hmm. So, Geshla, what do you think? Uh, well, I guess, you know, 
of course we have to ask why we have that genetic code and we don't have the other genetic code. Um, I myself had a lot of allergies uh, and it was a funny thing because I went to the allergy doctor and, uh, and they tested me and they said, you're allergic to, to juniper trees. So here's a juniper tree outside my window. And, uh, and I asked the doctor, if I cut the tree outside my window, will it help me? He said, yes, and there's 10,000 other trees around your house. Uh, you can also cut those, you know. So, you know, I got upset and I thought, well, you know, that's not going to work out. And then uh, personally, I started to notice that uh, if I drink more dairy, if I have more milk or, or like cake or something with milk in it, um, I get more allergies. Uh, and uh, then I started to think about how milk uh, causes harm to the animals, you know. Actually, the system of getting milk is pretty cruel. Uh, you, have to, uh, you have to keep the, the cow pregnant all the time, and then they will make milk, you know. And, uh, and then when they stop making milk, you kill them, and you make dog food out of them. Uh, my, friend, uh, my friend has a, a farm in New York, upstate New York, and, uh, next door uh, and they they started to keep cows retired cows they yeah. bought the old cows from the milk farmers and they protect their life and he said something funny uh, next door there's a real uh milk farmer and his cows broke down the fence uh to come and live with the other cows who are protected and uh, it was very cool so anyway i think uh I would try to reduce the milk, and it's not that milk has something in it which is bad for you. I think it's the process of how we get milk uh, is harmful. So I think like that. The genetic code thing, you know, who made your <laughs> genetic code? <laughs> and uh, we did, right? So, yeah. Any other thoughts, you guys? Janice and Kim? You know, I, I was thinking, you know, Florin, in the meantime, while you're doing your research to think about what's causing you know the trees and the flowers and and the hay around you to send off this pollen that seems to be hurting you you could use conventional methods but if you use conventional methods just like anything else you have to load it by helping them helping somebody else that's got the same problem um and then you can start eliminating the things that is that happens to be creating the problem like like geshe michael said dairy because of the way it's processed hurting the cows um, avoiding uh, food that causes harm to farmers, pollutes rivers and fishes, you know. So we want to protect life and we want to plant, um, we want to get results from conventional methods like allergy medicines. And that what you would do with a four-step plan, helping somebody else who also has hay fever. And it sounds like you're living with someone who's suffering. So if you help your daughter and teach her about protecting life and you're going to be on the path to recovery. Oh, wow. Wow. Thank you, Janice. Um, but then I have a question. Yeah. <laughs> so usually when we uh, start to plant seed, and especially in Florian's case, uh, he wants to plant seed for both him, himself and his daughter. So in this case, we'll ask, okay, does, can I plant seed by just helping my daughter? Would that work? Or maybe I should find another family who are also suffering from hay fever? Uh, Keshla, what do you think? Well, that's a great question. And um, this is my instinct, and I, it comes partly from the ancient books. Uh, it seems like you get more karma if you help someone who's not your close friend or family, mm -hmm. uh, especially if you help someone that you don't like or your enemy. So it seems, uh, it seems uh, the case like we're, we're studying the Lam Rim right now. We are recording the Lam Rim retreat. And uh, it also says that uh, when, when you're having a difficult time, like in the virus, or you're having a difficult time with another person, then any good deed you do is much more powerful. So they said from that point of view, it's better to be in this bad world than to be in the Buddha paradise. 
because in a Buddha paradise, you can't make powerful seeds, but in a lousy place, you can make powerful seeds. So I'm, I'm thinking, in my opinion, uh, of course, to help any other person is, is a great thing. And even to help yourself is a great thing. But I, but I also encourage Florian to, Florian to help someone that he doesn't know, or, or maybe someone uh, that he doesn't like even. And maybe, uh, you know, maybe, maybe if he and his daughter, his daughter also has to do the same thing. He cannot give her karma, right? I have one more suggestion, Wang Ken. Yep. Uh, this is a picture I took a few days ago. Ah, wow. Uh, this is Veronica uh, and with our beehive. <gasps> and uh, we, got, we got a lot of honey coming out. Okay. And, uh, and I think uh, if Florian, Florian can help the bees, do something to help the bees, and they live on the pollen. They, they survive from the pollen. That's their protein source. So uh, maybe if he makes friends with the pollen by helping the pollen, you see? <laughs> and uh, then the, so, you know, maybe support some beekeepers or, or even to try, you know, it's a beautiful hobby. It's a very nice hobby and it helps the whole world. So maybe you want to think about making friends with the pollen. Okay, you guys have any other ideas? Wow, well, Kushla, I think that's really cool. So yeah. what if like he lives like me in a, a modern cage <laughs> recently? <laughs> so, uh, what can he do? Maybe he can support, um, maybe uh, give some donations to the, uh, any institution that ha protects bees? Like yeah, what if they uh, not have bees in their home? <laughs> you know, also we have a student, uh, uh, Brigitta, yeah, from yeah. Uh, Munich, Germany. And uh, she and her friend, and, and her friend uh, uh, Holger, uh, he keeps, he lives in the city and he keeps a beehive on the roof of his house. Wow. Uh, and uh, he doesn't know how to keep bees and he doesn't want to keep bees. So he called a beekeeper and said, you can use my roof if you give me one jar of honey every year. So they have a great, maybe that's a nice agreement. Yeah. You know, I was thinking too, he could uh, plant plants around his house uh, that bees really like. And, yeah. and, you know, that would be a good good thing too, because that would help him make friends with the pollen and with the bees, protect the bees <laughs> as well. And stop using pesticides because that hurts the bees. <laughs> and I have to say that since we got this beehive, I haven't had any allergies. That's amazing. So, yeah. maybe. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, I have a question. If he wants to help someone and they're really not interested in learning about, you know, how farmers are affected with pesticides and they don't care about organic foods, you know, how, how can he influ how can he do a four step plan with someone like that? Hmm. You mean uh he wants to reduce pesticides, but other people aren't interested in this idea. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, my my general uh, karmic advice when people won't cooperate with your four-step plan is uh, to, to try to listen to other people more carefully. So I, I, me, for example, I enjoy interrupting other people. All my friends gave up talking a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> they know whenever they start to talk, I will interrupt them. And I don't listen to their ideas. And I think, I think the result of that is that people don't listen when you want to ex describe your four-step plan, something like that. Yeah. So be more open to other people's ideas. I yeah, like I, I, like, I like to say you don't have to accept those ideas, but, but learn how to listen uh, with uh, sincerely, sincerely listen. Yeah. Yeah, it really occurs to me because I think we really plant seeds of not listening, especially with our family. Like uh, my boyfriend sometimes tells me, oh, you know what? And I usually only hear the first uh, half sentence. <laughs> then I go off to my computer or cell phone. That's, um, I think that's where I can improve, definitely. <laughs> that's great. Okay, you guys, we need to wrap it up. Yay. <laughs>
I I still think my my I still think he should watch Derry, and but don't not because Derry has anything in it, uh, but because it's it's created through harmful means, and uh, and I think I think the in in my own experience the allergies will start to go away. What do you think, Wang Ken? Yeah, I totally agree. Totally agree. Uh, I think I started a vegetarian vegan diet. I try not to consume milk. I really like almond milk, by the way. Um, so I started it like th uh, more than three years ago. And now wow. I, uh, so more than three years ago. Yeah, and I really feel, uh, this morning I was asking myself, when, when was the last time I got sick? I barely remember the feeling of uh, feeling sick, but I remember uh, years ago when I usually, when uh, season change, I would uh, got cold, I would be coughing. Yeah. It feels really, really bad, really yeah. bad. Yeah, but I, once I changed my diet, it just not happened anymore. <laughs> cool. Oh, that's cool. Janice, what do you think? Well, uh, you know, Florin, I'm gonna stick with, you know, buying food that doesn't harm other people or, other insects um, and planting uh, flowers around your home or uh, if you don't have a yard, big pots that you can set out in the windowsills or something with flowers that attract bees. And maybe even like um, um, Brigitte, uh, Brigitte's friend did, offer somebody an opportunity to set a beehive on your building or wherever <laughs> you live. Yeah, so that's what I would recommend. Okay, cool. All right, you guys, so there's a lot of suggestions for Florian. You know, people don't tell us how the suggestions are working. So Florian, I hope you will write us back later and tell us how smart we are and how well it worked. Uh, okay, you guys have a question for tomorrow? For Tuesday? Yeah, yep, we do. So the question for tomorrow, let's see. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so this question is in Chinese. I assume I should translate. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so um, this uh, lady is asking, she's ha uh, she has a boyfriend and uh, they're really, they feel really uh, the right person for each other. And uh, they have the same vision. Uh, but sad thing is, because her age is like um, more senior than uh, her boyfriend. So the boyfriend's uh, father doesn't uh, agree with their relationship. So she wanted to know how she can plant seed for to see uh, her partner's father to accept her and like her. Wow, cool, cool. Good question. I'm, gonna... I'm glad we don't have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I want to thank you guys, Wang Tian and Janice Sanders. Oh, here's the address for, oh, it's upside down, Janice. Oh. <laughs> well. Okay. Yeah, if you guys have questions, please uh, send a selfie to this address. And we love questions. We love questions from all over the world. And uh, you don't have to say them in English. We can translate them for you. So please feel free. Okay. All right. So we'll see you guys. Will you guys come back on Wednesday? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, let's do it, Jan. Let's do it. Thank you. <laughs> Somebody want to be the host on Wednesday? Yep. You know, I think I'd like to try it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So okay. I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Thanks for being on the show. I, I know, uh, you know, it's a lot of far away from Australia, but thank oh, you. Oh, it's my great pleasure. <laughs> yeah. But I really enjoy having you on the show. You were really good on the Mixed Nuts Reading Club. You're you're really good about those ancient books. So thank you very much for that too. Oh, thank you, Gesha. Yeah. Okay, Thanks for having us, Geshe. Michael, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Diana. Okay. See you all Wednesday. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay. Thanks for watching today's Peachtree Morning Show. See you next time.